Well, good morning, my friends from across the world, from Pakistan and India and the USA. And I have a friend here that is with me in Chicago, Illinois. We are at the uh, the headache clinic, the Diamond Headache Clinic Hospital, where my husband and many other people are here hoping for healing from their migraines and some of the other issues that they came with. I'm so grateful to be here and grateful to be able to share with you what God is doing and how he's doing it and maybe why things aren't going just the way that people want them to. So let's open with a word of prayer this morning. Father, I thank you. Gratitude is the key to all of our problems and we are grateful that you have come lord and that you have promised us healing and we want to hear from you this morning so speak through me let your holy spirit move in a mighty way that we may know what it is you have for us and how we can receive what you have to offer us in jesus name amen amen so I preached a few weeks ago about healing when I found out I had cataracts and maybe some other issues and I still have yet to have my surgery. Oh my goodness, now that I'm thinking about it, I'm going to have to cancel my first surgery because I'm going to be here probably with my husband down in Chicago. He has had migraines since he was six years old and lately it has become very severe. So we were fortunate enough to find this amazing place that has this fantastic view of Lake Michigan with the sunrise and oh my goodness, it's just uh, amazing. And there are so many doctors and specialists that have come in. I just can't even believe how much the services are coordinated and friends, um, in other countries, I am so sorry that you don't have the opportunity to have what we have here in America, to have all these specialists and to have the amazing insurance we have. I know you struggle to even get medicine. I know my friends in Pakistan are struggling with malaria and some diseases from mosquitoes and water that I've never even heard of. So our prayers are with you and the other countries. And, and my friend's wife is now in the hospital with some kind of tumor. And you don't have what we have here to offer. So we will pray for healing for you. But I want to share with you today a, a few of the scriptures. And, you know, there's so many different beliefs about healing and you know, why people aren't healed and all of these things. And I may have a bit of a different view, but knowing what Paul went through and why he wasn't healed, we we don't really know. But I'm going to share with you some thoughts today. And if they resonate with you, super. If they don't um, and you think I'm a quack, hey, you know, you're entitled to agree to disagree. <laughs> I'm not offended when people don't agree. I speak as the Holy Spirit speaks to me. And you need to do the same. You need to pray and say, God, what would you have me um, gather from this message today? But some of the things that people struggle with is... I think one thing, I've been a Christian for 47 years. Um, I grew up prior to that, I was just turned 58. So I grew up in the church believing that Jesus died on the cross for my sins and that Jesus loved me this I know for the Bible told me so. And I still believe that, but it didn't really have a whole lot to do with my day-to-day -day existence until I turned 21 and was gonna commit suicide because I was caught up in alcohol and drugs and all kinds of things that I just couldn't seem to quit. And going through a divorce already at that age and many other things that I had guilt and shame over. Now those sorts of things can be a hindrance to receiving what God has to offer. 
in part because we don't feel we deserve the healing. We think we may have done things too bad and that why should God heal us because we are such horrible people. That, that is one thing that can hinder the healing that we might want to receive or that other people receive is that we just don't think we deserve it. Another thing that some people struggle with is they don't believe that God can heal. And that's understandable. If we have a chronic illness and we've gone every place and we've tried everything, for me, um, taking alcohol and all kinds of drugs and, you know, sex, drugs, and rock and roll. I grew up in the 70s. You try everything to fix things. Now, whether it's physical healing or mental or emotional healing or trauma that we've been through, all of these things we need to be healed from. And if we don't believe God can because we haven't seen it, and it hasn't come quickly, like <laughs> we as human beings in our sin nature and in our limited uh, experience, we want it and we want it now. I mean, oh my goodness, some of the fast food things, now they've got a little time limit that if they aren't serving you within a minute and 30 seconds or <laughs> some crazy thing, that you get something free or whatever. How, how nuts is that, that we have such uh, expectation of immediate things? Now, God can heal immediately. He can even raise people from the dead. And the cool thing is that as believers, he told his disciples that even greater things can we do than he did when he was here, if we have the capacity and the faith and the belief. Now, if people aren't healed, there is a lot of guilt and shame. Well, you just don't have enough faith. Okay, so we're human beings. And I, I have another thing that I think God can use our experience to be a blessing to others. Now, he, here's an example. If I wasn't here today preaching this message, my friend who I just met, who's sitting over here, may not have gotten the blessing that I pray that she's going to get from this message. And that's because my husband's ill. I took my book, Speak to Me, God, I'm Listening, 365 Daily Meditations for those who want to hear God answer life's toughest questions. I took it down to the bookstore here. I just had it with me to, to read. And my husband reads my book every day and I get blessed because when I wrote it, I prayed that God would speak to me and he did. And I wrote down what he said to me. So then I read it and go, oh my gosh, that's amazing. <laughs> Where did this come from? I have no recollection because if you're, if you're truly listening to God in writing down what God says to you, which I believe every single one of us have the opportunity to do, you go back and you, it's, it's a remembrance, just like the Word of God is. As you read His Word, years later, it comes back to us. That's why Joshua 1.8 says, This book of the law should not depart from your mouth, but you should meditate on it day and night that you're careful to do everything that's written in it, and then you'll have good success. So a lot of times... We forget what the word says, and I forget what God has spoken to me, so I need to be reminded what God has said to me in the past so that I can implement and go, oh, yeah, that's right. Fear not, for I'm with you. Don't be afraid. I'm your God. I'll strengthen. I'll help you, and I'll uphold you with my victorious right hand. He said that, and that holds true to do today. So God God's word is so important, and that's why I'm sharing it this morning. So sometimes, here's the thing. There are people, and, and I get it, that just do not, will not believe that God has created individuals, scientists, doctors, experts, that have created medicines that God has given them the wisdom and the experience and the amazing 
I, I just can't believe all the doctors that were here uh, to help my husband with every single illness he's got. He's got a, a um, nephrologist to help with different things. And he's got a blood doctor and one for his prediabetes and one for his stomach issues and one for his neurology for the brain issues. Unbelievable. And a physical therapist, all these different people that can help him. So his refusal, um, you know, if we refuse to have the medicine and accept the medicine uh, that that we need, I'll share this with you later, ma'am. I will. Uh, so uh, everybody has doctors here that are treating them today. So she has to go. But um, we have medicine that God has given us to be used. Now, we've seen this throughout the Bible, that he has used different kinds of medicine. Mud. He picked up mud one time for somebody that was blind, and he healed him. So we don't know. I mean, who would have thought? I know my mother always said that when I would got bee sting. She'd go and get some mud and put it in, and the bee sting would come out. Where do we get this stuff? But there's a lot of other things out there that um, experts come with and can heal with and we have seen this through COVID as we've gone through that no matter where you are in the world no matter what you believe even people who have thought that the medicine for COVID was a hoax and was is just out there to kill us those same people my guess is they're in a car accident going to the hospital is the first place they go to probably get pain medicine or if their child has got an infection, they're probably gonna go to get some antibiotics. So what's the difference? Only God knows, only God knows. So we, you know, the belief that God can't use some of these uh, ways of healing could be part of the thing. Sometimes we are, you know, doing things that are sin to us. Um, sin can cause sickness. Those who, First uh, Corinthians, those who eat and drink without discerning the body of Christ and drink judgment on themselves. That's why many of you are weak and sick. So sometimes to be remembering Christ and saying, oh, I'm here. I'm going to do what you want me to do. I repent. And yet we continue to do the things that we know we shouldn't do. If we can, it says in James, if we, um, it says if we confess our sins, God's faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness and cleanse us from the things that might be hindering that. But um, it also says that if you know what's right to do and you fail to do it, then it's sin. So with that, we have got natural means that God has given us to bring healing to our bodies. Now, Daniel was, was a prophet, and he, he was, uh, oh, he did a lot of amazing things. Read the book of Daniel. It's pretty cool. But one of the things that Daniel was an example of was his men were stronger than the men who had all of these foods, and all they ate was whole foods. We hear a lot about whole foods. They didn't eat the meat. They just ate the greens. They drank the water. They didn't have the wine. They didn't have all of the wonderful desserts and foods out there. But we have become a world of spoiledness <laughs> and gluttony where we just eat and eat and eat. And if it's put in front of us, we eat it. So we become compulsive. The United States has got more fat people than we do people who are healthy, myself included. I never would have thought myself to be overweight, but what does that mean and how did we get here? We got here out of gluttony. We got here in some of the sicknesses that we have. Now, what is high cholesterol ca caused from? Now, some people are, uh, you know, born with it, but high cholesterol comes from eating too much, too much fat, too much um, things that have cholesterol in them. 
the wrong foods. And where do we get the wrong foods? The wrong foods largely were created by man because they're cheap, because they're easy, because they're saleable, and because we like them. <laughs> so we eat a lot of them. You know, butter is great, but having tons of butter and tons of cheese and tons of milk and tons of things that have cholesterol in them can cause problems. Now, I'm not a doctor, a nutritionist, or any of that. And you're going to read tons of stuff online about it. And take it or leave it, again, you can agree to disagree. But the other thing we know is that exercise helps us. It's good for us. It's necessary. There's another Bible verse that says, we buffet our bodies. We run like a uh, like someone in a contest who is is winning a running to win a prize. We have to take care of our bodies because our bodies are a temple of the Holy Spirit. So if we're eating junk food and we are overweight, our bodies are struggling to manage that. We end up with, if you're eating a ton of carbohydrates and you're eating a ton of things that cause our bodies to be inflamed and, and have inflammation, inflammation causes problems with every body part, every organ. And for myself personally, I get migraines as well. And I know that when I'm eating a lot of food that is not good for me, lots of salt, lots of inflammation, it contributes to my migraines. So how much are we really working to take care of our bodies, to eat healthy, to exercise, to get plenty of sunlight, drink lots of natural water, not soda, not all of these other things that we drink because they taste good. How are we doing? with the natural means that God has given us to take care of us. So, um, you know, some people just accept sickness. Oh, well, there's nothing I can do. It is what it is. And they don't do what they can do, like go to doctors, like do this healthy stuff. And they just accept what they think they can't change, which is kind of a lack of faith and a lack of willingness to say, you know what? I can do better. I can take care of myself. Here's the other thing. As a counselor for the last 30 years, I can tell you that our mental health, Dr. Carolyn Leaf is one of the people, she's a Christian um, neuroscientist who has researched this thing. And research has shown not just by her, by people all over, that about 80% of our physical sicknesses come from our thoughts, our brains. Our brains create the belief that life is terrible. <laughs> so we have these rotten potato thoughts that cause literally negative thinking and, and cause us to be like a rotten potato. It infiltrates our brain, it infiltrates our thoughts, and it poisons, literally poisons our bodies. It's an amazing thing, and I, I've got done a lot of stuff on that. So if you want more information on how the brain works and how we can cause ourselves to be mentally and physically sick, just think about it. You get anxious about something. You get stressed about something. Oh my gosh, what am I going to do? So the brain kicks off a fight or flight response or freeze and it goes oh i gotta do something so then we go and do something and that do something puts off um, chemicals in your brain that helps you fight that emergency but if that emergency continues on like oh i'm sick um or you know what am I going to do now? I need money. I don't have insurance. Now you're stressed out. So this can, these chemicals are kicked off in your brain. These natural human chemicals that God has given us for good. But we have found ways <laughs> to fix those 
problem sometimes with negative things like alcohol and drugs and food, which then causes more things or our thoughts of fear and, oh, I don't know what to do. So then we have a chronic problem with these chemicals being spit off, which then causes chemical imbalance in the brain. And now we're sick. It also can be from these root issues of resentment and negativity, which is again, causing toxicity in the brain. If we are sitting, that's why the Bible says, do not um, be angry, but sin not. There's nothing wrong with human emotions of, ah, it really makes me mad, but it says, don't let the sun go down on your anger for a reason so that we don't harbor resentment. So we don't let that negative thought cause the sickness that then causes physical sickness. Because think about it, when you get stressed, your heart races, you get sick to your stomach, your body stresses out, you get tension in your neck and back, and you get headaches, you get migraines from stress. But we don't have to live in that stress if we believe that God is in charge. I fear not, for I am with you, have no anxiety about anything, but in everything through prayer and supplication, which is constantly saying, God help me, God help me, except the things I cannot change, change the things I can, the prayer, um, the serenity prayer, and he will give you the peace that passes all understanding, which will keep your heart and mind on Christ. Holy cow, how amazing that is. It's a very cool thing that God has done to help us. So those root issues also can cause uh, problems. It could be that God requires us to be sick as punishment from the Garden of Eden. And this is just our lot in life. And okay, there's some truth to that, that women will suffer with the monthly thing. <laughs> and there is some truth to some of that. You know, can we pray away our menstrual cramps? <laughs> yeah. Well, to be honest, when you do things that we're learning here, biofeedback, the meditation, the relaxation, the prayer, yes, you can even manage pain. It's amazing the things, the things I do with my clients <clears throat> on things like emotional uh, freedom, technique it's tapping it's tapping on the meridian points that god has given us like here that go directly to our brain and when we tell ourselves i am not in pain i am being healed it can mentally bring healing it's crazy it's amazing i never knew this 30 years i've been a counselor never knew this but every client i've used it with has found relief from their anxiety and their pain so it's just a few of the things that we can consider. Now, the other thing that I mentioned is that Paul had this problem with his eyes and he didn't really clarify, but he prayed three times, God, heal me, God, heal me, God, heal me. And God said, because of your pride and that I might get the glory, that's why he wasn't healed was so God could get the glory. Now, what does that mean? That may mean that some people suffer for a period of time so that, like in this experience, God can be healed. People can be healed by medication, by different means of, of stuff, by the food that God helps them, by the exercise. Who knows what it's going to be? Maybe a combination of all. And how does God get the glory when we make the changes? We may want to get prideful, like Paul had a real problem with pride. So he may be, it may be one of those things where, where he gets, um, wants the, the glory. Because Paul would go around and heal people, but he couldn't heal himself. And why is that? Because the minute we start thinking it's all about us, and we forget what God has done in and through us, we miss the boat. So how does that work? Um, it's very simple. 
God. I, I do a thing called the three G's and so do all the people that I work with. First one is gratitude. Wake up in the morning grateful that God has promised to be there, to bring me comfort in my affliction, the word says. In my affliction, in my migraine, in my back pain, in whatever issues. I have lots of issues myself. God has promised to bring me comfort in those afflictions. So how am I going to do that? Through gratitude. I'm going to say thank you, Lord, for giving me what you've given me. Um, and you've promised me. So that's what I'm doing. I am prom I am going to God and asking him or telling him how grateful I am for all the things that he has done to me, done for me. The second thing is um, good at. What am I good at? A lot of times we are so hard on ourselves and we forget what God has gifted us. And we sit on literally a pity pot of, oh, you know, poor me, I'm not any good at anything, and how can God use me? And even when you are sitting here in the hospital, what good are you? But I told my husband yesterday, I'm so glad you went to that support group and you talked because God is going to use you in that. And he's going to bless other people because you are there. I'm going to bless other people because I'm here. The bookstore I brought my book to yesterday is uh, considering carrying it in their bookstore, which then could bless every other person that comes into this hospital for the rest of time. So see how God uses us. And if you're looking for what you're good at in using the gifts God has given you to use, which is what I'm doing today, um, then blessings come then it changes our brain chemistry because it makes me feel good that I can help others. Like the lady that came in here, she said, you're going to preach the word of God. Oh, I need to hear the word of God today. One of our nurses is a Christian. And, you know, it's just amazing how God uses us. So keep that in mind. What are you good at? And the third one is your goals. What is your goal today to get healthy, to avoid having headaches and uh, diabetes and chest pains and cholesterol issues and all these things uh, that people have, high blood pressure and intestinal issues. What are you doing today for that? So uh, those are the three things that I do. Now, every week I read from my book, Speak to Me, God, I'm Listening, and I just flop it open, see where it goes, um, but I don't, I gave it to the bookstore, so I don't have it. So what I'm doing is I pulled it up on my computer and I'm just scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. I'm just going to stop, see where it goes, because that's how God works. I'm just stopping, see where it goes and see where God, uh, what it falls on to see if it, um, if it has something to do with what I'm preaching on. I've never had this not happen or what I pull up has something to do. So here's what it is. And this happens to be, where did I stop on January 12th? And the topic is save them now. Step 12 of the 12 step programs because I'm recovering alcoholic and drug addict. And I use what God says in his word um, in this so that I can relate to other people, even those who may not believe in God. Um, this is encouraging. So here's what God said to me when I asked him, um, you know, about what was my topic, about relapse, about falling back in and, and not trying and giving up and giving in to the demons, which a lot of people who are sick do. They just quit. They just commit suicide because they're sick and tired of being sick and tired, whether it's alcohol or drugs or pain. They just give up. And so this is what God said to me. He said, my child, it seems that so many people feel they have it the worst and therefore justify violating the purpose I have for them by comfort, comforting themselves with whatever defects of character they fall, choose to fall back into. With the help of those of you that I have sent forth to reach out, they can be well again. Boy, does this fit? I think so. You can be well again. Yes, you too need help. So reach out to another 
and you will find much of your own problem has been solved. Rely on my love for you and my ability to work through you. <sighs> wow, how does that fit for what I'm talking on today? Every people in this hospital today, on this unit throughout the world, every one of you who are struggling, those of you, my friend Saul, whose wife is in the hospital, um, God can use you, will use you. Uh, my friend Sam, uh, who got me on doing this every Saturday for the last almost three years, it'll be three years in October, gosh, in another month, he got me doing this because of COVID asked me, because churches were closed all over the world, he said, can you preach on my on my Facebook channel. And here I am still three years later doing this, um, giving people the opportunity to hear what God's doing in my life. So God can use you wherever you are, whatever your experience. And if you say, God, help me, help me to be a blessing today. There's a song I grew up with, make me a blessing, make me a blessing today. Oh God, I pray. So today, wherever you are, whoever you are, God will use you. He's given you gifts, talents, abilities, and experiences, including the illness that you're suffering with, to be a blessing to others, to give them hope that, you know what, there is hope. I've done this and I've gotten better. I've realized this food causes me to have migraines. Uh, this this uh Bio, I, I just talked to a new lady this morning that I just met. Biofeedback has really helped me. Um, yeah, exercise has made a difference. Yes, losing some weight has made a difference. Yes, um, meditation and believing in God has made a difference. What are you doing today with your challenge, with your struggle? I want to pray for you today that God would heal you. Father, I just ask that whatever, whoever's listening from wherever they are in the world, that you would give them the faith to believe that there is healing and that you do want them to be healed. And Lord, I know sometimes that healing will come when it will be, and it will be eternal, that we will never have pain again. And help us to hang on to that moment, God, because hanging on to the knowledge that we will never have pain again will give us a better feeling about living in today. It will give us that, that chemical release of, a, of a breathing with hope that there will be life without pain. Help us today, Lord, to trust in you with this moment. Help us to hear from you what we need to do, what our part is in the healing you want to provide and will provide for us because you love us, have a plan for our lives. Help us to go forth with joy today in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you all. And hang in there and share your experience, strength, and hope with others that they too might be healed. Amen.